Hi, I'm Charles with Anycat. Previously, a boy named Wong was born with unimaginable power and decided to hide his power forever. His parents then gave him an amulet and a pill to suppress his power. Wong saved the world as a child but let a man named Yi take the credit and now he tries to live a normal high school life. The story continues as class has just ended. Sunro approaches her prey and her target is completely oblivious. Outside though, we see that she is being closely observed by a couple of masked people. Sunro is so direct in asking Wong on a date that he is caught off guard and we see that the masked men have confirmed Sunro is their target. One is instructed to shoot her but he is stopped by a strange force. With no response from Wong, Sunro desperately asks for him to date her and the other boys become jealous. Wong just wants to live a peaceful life and catches a break when he is called to the principal's office. It's clear to the criminals that someone strong is on the campus and they are told to pull back. Wong responds to another student but Sunro hears and mistakenly thinks that he accepts her request for a date. News of their date spreads rapidly through social media and students have a hard time believing the most popular and wealthy girl in school is dating the weakest. Wong arrives to the professor's office and is introduced to the legendary Master Yi, who saved the world years ago. When they are left alone though, Yi reveals that he remembers Wong as a child 10 years ago, and how he was actually the one that defeated the thousand year old demon king with just one kick. Yi had been given the credit that day but calls Wong the true master and explains that he had been looking for him ever since that day, in the hopes that Wong would train him. Wong isn't interested at all though, and uses a technique he calls the trick of forgetting. At 100% capacity, this ability will make a person forget an event, but also has a chance of putting them in a vegetative state. For this reason, he only uses 50% of the ability, and afterwards we see that Froggy informs him about the assassins. Later, Wong has a nightmare about Sunro's advances, but is shocked when he sees her outside his house. Wong's most important goal in life is to keep his immense powers a secret, and doesn't want to do anything to jeopardize that. He hoped that his parents would feel the same way, but they are eager for him to go on the date. Wong's mother tells him not to be nervous about it, and his father wants him to make sure that he passes on their family's good genetics. We then see that Sunro had won his parents over with a box of expensive nutritional pills that Wong's father believes will make his wife more beautiful than ever. They force him out of the house, and Wong begins to hope that the assassins show up again. The tabloids follow the new couple, and we see that the assassins are instructed to do the same. Sunro takes him to a large amusement park that her family owns and has been cleared out just for their date. She instructs her guards to stand back and explains that Wong will be the one to protect her. Afterwards, the guards are taken out by the assassins and the couple reach their first attraction. The assassin attempts to shoot Sunro but the bullet is amazingly caught by Wong and sent back. His movement was too fast to see and Sunro thought him showing his teeth was actually a smile meant for her. Wong uses his trick of forgetting and the assassin thinks he was thrown back because of the recoil of the gun. Wong would then spend the rest of the day thwarting the assassin's attacks and making everyone forget. Wong finally finds an attraction he likes as he thinks he might finally be able to have a moment of quiet. However, the assassins follow them onto the ferris wheel and we see that Yi prepares for trouble. Sunro had prepared fireworks ahead of time but that only distracts Wong from impending danger. The assassins take them hostage, but Wong thinks about how grateful he is that there is now some quiet time. Sunro gets them to admit that they are part of the Shadow Faction and they must be told to keep their mouths shut. We see that Yi's hero squad begins to arrive and Sunro tries to protect Wong. Sunro explains that she is the one they are after and begs that they let the innocent Wong go free. Wong has become increasingly impatient with the assassins though and uses the slightest hand gestures to send the criminals flying. He defeats them while barely even moving at all by using an attack called the Mercy of Buddha, and Yi watches in amazement. Sunro is in disbelief as well, and Wong makes her promise that the incident will be their secret. She agrees, and it is revealed to us that this was also the first time in Wong's life that he used the 100% trick of promise. This way, the memories of the day will be sealed in her mind as a secret, and won't have to be erased. Elsewhere, the leader of the Shadow Faction is upset that they have disappointed one of their clients since they failed to assassinate Sun Ro. Her subordinates assume that Sun Ro has a powerful person protecting her. The woman won't let Sun Ro ruin their group's 100% success rate and issues a Shadow Kill order. They are a bit hesitant, but she demands it of them. At the school, a robotic bug that is able to measure people's force value follows Sun Ro. Thanks to Wong's power reducing amulet and power suppressing pills, the bug reports that he is not a threat. The boys at the school want details of his date and we see that Sunro is even more infatuated with Wong now. She will be under constant surveillance by the school after being targeted, but she says she doesn't know about any assassins. 
Wong is glad to see that his trick of promise is working, and Yi arrives to reveal that he had taken care of the assassins that night. We then see that after the incident, Yi had mentioned how amazing his master Wong's attack was, and Wong changed Li's memory so he would think that he defeated the assassins instead. The Shadow Faction overhears their conversation and now thinks that Yi is responsible for foiling their plan. Yi then reveals that the Shadow Faction has placed a Shadow Kill Order on Sun Ro, but he has already set up a plan to protect her. With the help of her father, he has placed several guards inside and outside of the school. Furthermore, she will stay in the professor's office where he has placed a protective force field over. The top-notch security surrounding that room is further demonstrated on a poor innocent fly when he explains he has invited the Seven Star Squad. The Shadow Faction won't be denied though and one of them manages to tunnel in. He is a master assassin named Zhu Feng and he easily handles the super tough guards outside the school. Zhu Feng calls on reinforcements and sees that he has been spotted. Professor Zhu Kong promises to protect the students with his life, but they are too busy on social media to care. Everyone seems to be gossiping about Sun Ro's date with Wong. Not to be ignored though, Professor Zhu Kong also tries to join in on the messaging. The guards inside the school are confident in their abilities since they are much higher level than the ones outside. However, an assassin that is a master in toxins named Zhu Ying arrives to instantly defeat them. Zhu Ying leaves the rest of the guards to Zhu Fang, but must then quickly dodge a deadly attack and we see that it came from Zhu Kong. The Shadow Faction's boss sees that there are only 5 people left in the room, and the leader of the assassins named Zhu Jian explains that he is ready to attack. Zhu Jian is able to conceal his existence, and he wields a magical hammer with enormous power. He has been gathering power this entire time and plans to unleash an unstoppable attack that will smash through Yi's seal. Just then, Wong finds that he has earned a prize after collecting several dry noodles, and it will be brought to him by a drone very soon. Everyone gathers to watch Professor Zhu Kong's fight and sees that he is actually quite formidable. Zhu Ying shows off tremendous control of his weapon, but Zhu Kong is completely unfazed and mocks the Shadow Faction for using toys they found online as weapons. Wong is told that his package is near and Zhu Ying's attempt to escape is stopped when Wong goes to get his package. Yi lets him go since Wang is not the target. Zhu Ying is then captured but Zhu Fang has cleared the rest of the guards outside. He tries to befriend the adorable Froggy but quickly realizes that the pet had actually drained his spiritual force. Froggy is able to return to a larger state and defeats the now elderly and fragile Zhu Fang. The leader of the assassins is the only one left but has completely concealed all evidence of his existence and is determined to finish gathering power. However, Wong appears and says something that makes Zhu Jian think he has been found. Wong gets his prize though and Zhu Jian remembers that him being found is impossible. Wong explains though that he actually has found him and his group's plans for assassination have failed. Zhu Jian is furious as no one has ever been able to see through his ability. In his rage, he completely abandons the mission and decides to unleash the power he has been storing for hours on his new target. The immense attack does nothing to Wong though, and Zhu Jian can't understand how someone with such little spiritual force could withstand his attack. Yi arrives to express his amazement, but Wong once again changes his memory so that Yi thinks he defeated the assassin. The students arrive to celebrate Yi's accomplishment, but he can only express remorse for being late and not being able to rescue Wong. Later, we see that Wong is now on sick leave from school. Being a low profile hero means he had to pretend to be injured during the attack on the school and Suro couldn't help but worry. She used her family's resources to gather the best medical experts and they created the state-of-the-art healing pod. Valuable medicines now shower him automatically every hour, and his mother arrives disappointed to see that he is still pretending to be injured. It's already been 10 days and she instructs him to go back to school in a couple days. His classmates arrive with gifts and an extremely annoying parrot. They joke about the bird's resemblance to Wong but he isn't amused at all. Sunro wants to use this opportunity to build a relationship with the mother of the man she loves and reveals that she has brought more gifts, including medicine to help Wong. His mother demands that Wong entertain his friends and make sure to cherish Sunro especially. Sunro continues to express concern for Wong and he assures her that he is feeling much better now. Wong is a bit more accepting of her after seeing how worried she was for him, but becomes nervous when she prepares to inject some chicken blood tonic into him. Chen explains that their professor needs him to take the spiritual force test like everyone else, but Sunro wants to give him the injection first. She plans to do a spiritual force infusion as well, but Wang decides to reveal that he has just fully recovered. His classmates have waited to do the test together and Chen goes first. 
He demonstrates how they must create a sphere and its diameter will determine their force value. Chen's is measured to be around 600 and he explains that it is different from the one at the entrance exam. This is because the new test measures the spiritual force that one can produce outside their body and it actually takes a bit of training to achieve better results. Several students around the country are trying to achieve results that Wang is completely indifferent to, and we watch as the group receives some pretty high scores. The first student almost hit a value of 2000, and the next achieve a frighteningly high score of 4379. His name is Tang, and his results land him in first place on the leaderboard. His group celebrates as that must have certainly broke the legendary Yi's record, and they are confident their school, Faction 59, will rank the highest. Hago's score is very low and he must be calmed down when he wants to end his life from shame. Sunor wants to skip the test and fears she might do too much damage, but the boys encourage her since they estimate her sphere won't be that large based on her entrance exam score. Sunor's power shakes the house and her value is revealed to be 4015, landing her in second place. This amazes everyone and Wong prepares for his turn. Sunro is concerned for his health as he seems worried, but he is actually just thinking about how much to reduce his strength. Wong tries to limit his spiritual force as much as possible, but sees that it is still too much. The force causes the wristband to malfunction, but he worries that the sphere he creates will reveal his secret. The leaderboard shows that Wong's results are null, and when his classmates search for his sphere, we see that Wong had to hide it in outer space. Everyone assumes that Null means his force is too low to measure, but he still somehow ends up at the top of the leaderboard. Wong tries to pass it off as a system error, but his friends demand that he admit to being the strongest student in the country. He isn't sure how to respond, but luckily they were just joking anyway. Later, Wong asks Hago to use his exceptional skills as a hacker to hack into the ranking system. The process is a bit strange and Hago confirms that what Wong really wants is for his score to be set at 175. Students from Faction 59 are investigating Wong's score, but can't find a value and are surprised to see that it means his power must have spilled over. Hago fails to break in, but Wong simply gets in by typing 8 stars, and the girl from Faction 59 notices another hacker. She realizes that the other hacker is clumsy and is about to set off the alarm. We see that Hago has found the arrogant Tang's name in second place and plans to teach him a lesson. He trips the alarm though, and the two hackers scramble to get out. Hago explains that he wasn't able to change Wong's score, but did manage to change Tang's name to his parrot's name, Birdie. Other Faction 59 students arrive and assume Tang must have changed his own name on the scoreboard out of embarrassment from being beaten by a nobody. The girl explains that there will be a competition next month and hopes that they get to meet the student in first place. Tang guarantees that they will find him though and promises to make him prove he belongs in first place. Thanks for watching part 2, 10,000 likes and I'll know you want a part 3.